Hey everyone, back here from a pad here. Today is a super exciting day for me. I'm going to show you how to transform any area in your garden into an area that's full of beautiful flowers and edibles and shade trees for free. The, the area I'm going to start with today is my chicken um, area, chicken run area. Um, recently, I put up a fencing around my chicken run area but the whole entire area is basically just weeds the lawn man isn't getting in here to cut the lawn anymore and it's just becoming really overgrown so today I'm going to show you how to transform whether it's your chicken run area or if it's an area in the garden um, but I'm going to show you how, to, how I'm going to do it for free and how you can too so let's get started Alright, so I had already started this morning. Oh, well, before I show you what I did this morning, let me tell you exactly where you need to start. So first, you're going to look at your area and then de decide, depending on the lighting, how much sun you get, um, how close you are to water, you're going to decide what you want to put in. Right, so I know my chicken run area is pretty big. I want to create an area that has edibles for me, but also has or plants that are edible for my chickens but I not only just want to create food I want to create a lot of beauty so I went through my garden to see what can I transport transplant or take cuttings off to add to my chicken run area that will add that beauty and shade and you know utility that I need so here's one that is a super easy plant to propagate and I think it's beautiful this is a longevity spinach. It is packed in nutri nutrition. This is also edible by, um, by the chickens. So I'm gonna take some cuttings of this. This will create a nice, beautiful hedge in front of other plants. So that's one thing I'm gonna create, um, take cuttings off. As we go along, I have some coleus here. These were from cuttings, they're growing up nicely. So that's a possibility. Then of course, my blue porter weed, that's definitely a good possibility and here's another one my passion fruit vine this one is huge it has taken over i think this would be a great vine to run along the fence this one is very thick very huge and my chickens actually like to hide under the under the passion fruit vine whether this one or that one they love to hide under it so let's see what else we have in the garden so definitely i'm gonna put some more banana trees over there so, you know, I have all these little banana suckers that's free. And before you know it, they'll be big like this. And they'll create, create their own growth. So I'm going to put some banana trees over here. And then my cranberry hibiscus, guys. This is so beautiful. And it's so easy to propagate. You stick it in water. Within a week or so, you have roots. And you plant it out. And in no time, I'll have more cranberry hibiscus. Then I think definitely... I'm gonna have my blue porter weed and let's see what else. So blue porter weed. So, so far we have what? At least five free plants that I can put in my food forest. Oh yes, can't forget the cassava. I love cassava, I love cassava, I love cassava. I didn't realize how much I loved it till I started growing it myself. It tastes so much better than store-bought. So I'm gonna have some cassava and then hello. I will absolutely have some papayas. So this tree, this papaya was planted as a little sucker, probably what, six months ago? And look at it now, guys. Look at it now. Seven feet tall, has all these papayas on it. And then here is my special banana. It has two suckers. They're a little bit small. So I won't, um, I won't plant these suckers yet, but one of those will also make it in. Uh, so far we have what? Seven, six or seven different plants. Then I have got to get some katukin. Katuk is like a super food. It's a multivitamin. I call it the multivitamin plant. It's beautiful with the leaves. Then it has these beautiful little flowers. And um, 
chickens actually love this i heard that chickens and goats actually love this so and i think it's beautiful i'm gonna put that in there also then let's see what else we have let's see what else we have hmm my moringa i could get a moringa in there i have a couple of moringas that i never planted somebody was supposed to get them they never came and they are still small so i think i'm gonna get this also all right so let's go spread this out and let's go get mr pinky and red's area ready for them so that they can enjoy their own area um, instead of wanting to come out here all right so i actually started this earlier this morning um the air was all grass, all grass before, all grass and weeds, I should say. It's mainly weeds. So what I did on the outside of the wire, so the outside where the chickens aren't, I chopped a cassava branch. I'm not sure if my cassava might be a little bit too green, but I it can't hurt. So I chopped one branch and I stuck little pieces of cassava root in here. I put I stuck three pieces here. So that's gonna create a nice little privacy hedge for them, a nice little cassava hedge. And then what I think I'll do with these moringas, I'll put one moringa here and one moringa on the other side of the cassava. So that's gonna create an, oh, sorry, a bug. <laughs> that, that's gonna create a nice little um, hedge for them. And also will create shade because as, as the sun rises, it hits the coop pretty hard. So that will create a nice shade over here. So what I did here this morning, this was, as I said, this was actually where the mulch pile was that I had for months. This is where the mulch pile was. So the soil was it's pretty nice underneath. The pile was there for like several months. So it started to break down. So I put the banana that I just pulled from over there um, in the island. I just put one banana here. That's one sucker. I put some cranberry hibiscus cuttings right here. You can see how small it is. And another cut in here. A couple of my cuttings I had started in water a few weeks ago. Never got a chance to plant them out. So there were a lot of roots on them. Um, and then some cuttings I just literally broke this morning and stuck them in the ground. So we'll see how it does directly breaking and sticking in the ground versus the ones that I rooted. I suspect the ones I rooted will do better, but if the ones that I just broke and stuck directly in the ground do well, then all the better. And thanks to all of you subscribers who, well, a few, a few of you um, called in or, or messaged me and you got your cut-ins. I really appreciate it. And let me know how, how they did um, once you get them and plant them in the ground. All right, so you can see what I'm trying to create here. I have the banana right here and I have the cranberry hibiscus on either side. This banana will soon become its own grove and then it will have the beautiful red on either side with the cranberry hibiscus. Then in front, I put right here, I put some Cuban oregano. I think the leaves are absolutely beautiful and it's food. If the chickens pick at it, it won't be a problem. So this is what I have for here. I'd actually cut some I had actually cut some katuk cuttings and guys, I have no idea where I put it. This place is so weedy, I can't even see. So I'm going to have to go cut, cut another piece of katuk and um, try and propagate it here. I don't know where I put it. I don't know where I put the katuk. And also right here, you can see um, I pulled up a few blue porter weeds. They look all um, wrinkly right now. Actually, these are ones that are had actually broken off so these are not these did not have any roots these two broke off it was a branch i broke so I'd, i'm just sticking it here to see if it does okay i probably remove the leaves to see if it does sprout leaves i mean yeah sprout leaves and i'm gonna transplant this to somewhere else i have it right beside some longevity spinach and here i have longevity spinach because the longevity spinach will grow up and even when they're in their coop they'll be able to eat the spinach through the coop I'll probably do the same with a katuk. I'll probably put some pieces of katuk right here. So on, on days when I'm not able to let them out, they can still eat their fresh katuk. And guys, look what I discovered. So here was all weeds. When I pulled the weeds out, 
this is actually a scotch bonnet pepper tree so it looked like i had put a scotch bonnet there before but it never grew because it was shaded out by the weeds all right let's see what we have back here back here oh lizards lizards back here i had a i put a couple sweet potato slips as you see and the sweet potatoes are doing very well um here is a uh, the banana from my mother-in-law well, from my mother-in-law who passed away that's a banana tree from her um, from her original banana so hopefully this one will grow i think to everything back here probably will do well because the chickens are up and about so that one what i'll probably do is take some of the bedding from the chicken coop and and mulch it's, it's mainly straw in there right now right now storm is in there enjoying it but it's mainly straw and poop so i'm gonna put some around the banana root but bananas is one plant that can handle the, the the hot we call it hot um compost meaning the uncomposed chicken coop chicken uh, manure chicken manure chicken poop is one of the most powerful and strong and just like that my phone died so guys it's exactly two weeks later well technically tomorrow makes it two weeks but we're going to call it two weeks later um it's been raining on and off. I haven't had to water anything. So let's check and see how everything is doing. So we ended on the banana. And I think there were maybe four leaves then. And guys, look. Look at the difference. You can see we have extra leaves. Look how fat these leaves are compared to a few seconds ago before my phone died. So everything has been like really filling out nicely. So let's go see how my transplants are doing. How my free transplants are doing. So let's start over here. So the banana tree is looking good. The cranberry hibiscus that I transplanted two weeks ago, they're looking quite, quite good. They look like they've grown a little bit. They're looking quite good. Um, in the middle, I put, I ended up putting one of the blue porta weed transplants here. And you can see it's erect. It's, you can see it took very well. I actually added two more today. Those are drooping right now because I just added them today. Um, along the front, I added several Cuban oregano or um, broadleaf thyme, Cuban oregano, French oregano, or, or French thyme, depending on what you call it. Those all took very, very well. So the bananas, so this area seems to be doing very, very well. All this straw is actually straw that I had piled up in the corner by the coop that I used to use in the chicken coop whenever I cleaned it out. But something ripped up the bag and so it got wet and it started rotting and breaking down. So I, I decided to use it as mulch instead. So over here, it's looking really good. I have my cranberry hibiscus on either side, right beside my pimento tree that was there before. Even Mr. Pimento, Miss Pimento is growing very, very nicely. You can see the flush of new leaves. Um, and then I'm going to have my blue porter weed and my oregano in front. So that looks great. Now let's look at the cuttings. This is a cranberry hibiscus cutting. You can see this looks extremely good, extremely healthy, extremely good. That took very, very well. Um, this one is a little bit, looks a little bit beat up, but it's still alive. What happened is I stepped on it a few times as I was going to take the eggs out of the coop. So that's really my fault. Um, you can see the other one I, I did from cutting looks really great. So the cuttings did very, very well. Now for the ones across, um, beside the coop, um, the blue porter weed seem to be doing the best. Um, that one is a blue porter weed and so is that one. And then right here... I have a uh, Cuban oregano, but it looks like Mr. Pinky might have gotten to it. They're extremely hardy. Um, Mr. Pinky probably ate most of the leaves. And then here I have my longevity spinach. A little bit droopy, but it looks like it's doing all right. The only thing that isn't looking great is my katuk. Still green. Um, I did not cut the leaves off. Oh, actually, this is a blue porter weed. This is just a stem that I put here okay so this one doesn't count so blue porter weeds are looking good um katooks are looking pretty good it didn't rain yesterday or today so that's probably why it's looking droopy when I checked it yesterday it looked it looked good uh what else okay so let's go check on the cassava let's see how the ch cassava is doing all right where is my cassava ah guys look hello 
so the leaves that were on the cassava dropped off but guys all of this is new growth so this is 14 days 13 or 14 days after um, I put it in put the sticks in and these were green sticks I really wasn't sure they were gonna make it but my cassava looks great let's check the other two all right so here is another one here's another cassava and it also has a new leaf right here so that's great this is just the tip of the cassava you can see I put very very small pieces like very very small pieces because I wasn't sure if it's gonna work but now that I know it worked I thought I really thought the cassava was too green but now that I know it worked I'm gonna chop another branch and stick um, additional pieces along here because cassava is an excellent food there were three pieces where is my third piece Ah, guys, and here is a third cassava. You can see it. It also leafed out. So I would say the cassava is a success. And of course, we know our cranberry hibiscus did well. I didn't get a chance to um, plant my moringa. Um, I'm going to see if I can do that. Maybe, hmm, maybe this weekend. But guys, look at my... So I didn't mention this to you, but this is called Bride's Bouquet. So Bride's Bouquet is a really beautiful plant. It grows up pretty tall. So what I did was I put one on either side of the fence. And it's, so it's going to flank the fence or flank the gate, the opening. And I just chopped it off. One of my subscribers, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Brian and his sister um, allowed me to take a couple of cuttings. Uh, probably three, four weeks ago. And I had it in water. It didn't have any leaves yet. I think about three weeks ago. And I just stuck it here in the ground. And you can see I did not remove the leaves. Which really the right, way, right thing to do is to remove the leaves and allow it to sprout. But I decided I wasn't even sure if it was going to work. So it's been in the ground for two weeks. None of the leaves have fallen off. It actually has blossomed. The blossoms have actually opened up. You can see. Look at that beautiful blossom. Bride's bouquet is really beautiful. It has, as you can see, these beautiful leaves. It grows into a nice, maybe six foot plant, six or eight feet. It can depend on the size, how, how much you prune it. But the but the leaves, the flowers come out like, it looks just like a bridal bouquet. So I think that's gonna be beautiful. I have one here and one, uh-oh. I have one over here. This one look like it got some kind of damage, but it's still alive, it's still green. And wait, let's look, guys, look. It actually has a new leaf. So it looks like my bride's bouquet took. Wow, I'm super, super, super excited about that. So it's gonna be really beautiful. I'm gonna have the bride's bouquet on either end and all my red um, cranberry hibiscus and my um, cassava, it's just gonna be fabulous. Oh yeah, I forgot to show you this. So um, I said I was gonna put some papayas over there, but I decided since I have this big open air over here by the guava I decided to stick um, one of the little papaya suckers over here you can see it's right there it's doing okay and I put a little cranberry hibiscus so as time goes on I'll definitely go through and put some more cuttings on this side over here outside of um, the coop area I didn't want to overcrowd it since I have so many things going on all right so as we walk back in so over here is still a jungle so what i may do is i probably weed whack weed whack this all the way down and i'll see if i can get some more straw to put over here um i was hoping the chickens were gonna do most of the work for me but you know mr pinky and, and reds are not um not earning their keep right now because you know chickens usually scratch and dig so i was hoping that they will you know plow this air for me but i guess i'll come in with a weed whacker weed whack this down probably put some straw over here and then this is going to be a nice another nice planting area i won't plant hmm what i might do is as it um put some put some of the compost down because i actually have a lot of compost that is unfinished i may lay down some compost here after a weed whack throw some straw on top of it and throw some maybe some wildflower seeds i have some wildflower seeds i think i'm gonna throw in there i mean of course i already have all the wildflowers that i need because my entire garden is just weeds which i call my wildflowers you can see they're they're kind of pretty i think 
Um, and over this side, the sunflowers has, have totally taken over. These are Mexican sunflowers. And you can see it started off with one stalk over here. Then it has fallen over and, and actually it looks like it's laying roots down because wherever it touches the ground, it actually lays roots. So I have a whole bunch of sunflowers here. This is actually phenomenal for chop and drop. So I think I'm gonna go through, probably chop this out, chop a lot of this off so I can have, um, be able to walk around to my compost. Hey, Miss Ladybird, Ladybug, yeah. So guys, so that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you can you saw how easy it is to fr to be to freely create your own little space. I did this really quickly in in on a Saturday afternoon. Um, I didn't do anything fancy, and while they may not look that great now, in another few weeks or another couple months, th these are going to be much bigger and much lusher and and just absolutely beautiful. I can see it. I can see it, and I hope you guys can see it too. So. Hope you enjoyed this video. Till next time, um, let's go out and start a little garden. Find a little area in your garden. It doesn't have to be a big area. Don't start. You can start small. I started small. I started with just this little area. It may not look like much now, but I know it's going to be great. If you enjoy this video and if you'd like to learn how to grow your own organic food, please go ahead and subscribe to me subscribe to my channel and hit the notifier bell so you can see when i post more videos on my channel till next time don't forget to follow me in, on instagram i do a lot more videos on instagram even more than i do here so plus i always post um, pictures and updates so go ahead and subscribe till next time bye now Look at my castor bean. Look at my castor bean. Yay.